My name is James Myers. Uh, this is my daughter Lily. She's four. I'll turn 40 in June. I work in uh, Superior, Wisconsin for Barco Hydraulics. I'm a drafter designer. Reason right now I'm riding the bus, I do have a vehicle, but uh, transmission went on it and cost them like 2,000 bucks to get fixed. It's been it's been broke down for two years, so I've been doing this for two years. Um, wake up around six o'clock in the morning. I take bus from 27th West to downtown. Then I get on this bus, the 11, to go up to uh, 9th and 11th Avenue East to take her to daycare. Then I walk four blocks down to 4th Street, take another bus downtown, transfer the Superior bus, get off the Superior bus, and then uh, walk eight blocks to work. The commute in the morning is about an hour and a half. Hour and a half both ways. I was born in Duluth and I've stayed in Duluth. I'm a mother of two boys and I earned my degree from St. Scholastica this spring and I work at the Duluth area YMCA. So a typical work day would be that we leave the house um, just a few minutes before the bus comes at 8.23 and take the bus down to the YMCA and it takes about five minutes to get down there and you don't have to worry about parking and then we um, take the bus home and the bus stop is just a block away from where I work and the bus takes us right home. I've not drove a single day in three years. I've bussed, biked and carpooled. I've even gone to trips overseas and Florida and Arizona. So you don't need to have a car to see the world or even the nation or do anything. You don't need a car to do those things. I'm Maxwell Magruder, I'm 24 years old. Well, I usually catch uh, the 10 up to uh, the mall area and uh, it only takes about uh, 10 minutes to get up there. I just uh, I leave, bus is always on time. Uh, this car behind me it gets like 8, 12 miles a gallon, so it saves me money. It saves, I don't know, everybody money, I guess. I mean, like my freshman year, I wanted to go up to the mall so bad but I, I always heard, oh, it takes like an hour and a half to get up there, you know, with the bus. So I'd always like, you know, some of my friends with cars, they'd drive me up there and, you know, little did I know it really takes, like I said, like 10 minutes. So do what you want, but I'd, I'd highly recommend taking the bus, at least trying it out, you know, especially UMD students, it's free. UMD is the greatest. I mean, you don't you don't have to deal with parking. You don't have to pay for a parking pass. It's free to students. Um, I mean, it's just the the list goes on. Especially if you live on a on a bus line. Well, I um, I take the bus every day. You know. Really, bicycle is what I is my first transport. I got my bike here today, but uh, in terms of like you know when it rains or it snows, you want to have the bus. Well, owning a car has uh, a lot of cost attached to it in this country, which is you know variable cost with the price of input of fuel uh, going up every day. You might decide, well, the money that I spent on gas could go for food or for medical expenses, or for bicycle repairs, you know, or for a bus pass. And what I, I found that what I pay 
for one month at a bus I use in one week on my car so I get you know a really good deal on oh, a wow. bus and I have a pretty good economical car I have a Ford Focus uh, you know and it's really a gas sipper 40 bucks to fill up the tank Mostly it's for convenience. I mean, it just, uh, my wife and I own a car um, and we'd prefer not to drive it for to save on the expense of driving it. And it's just convenient. I mean, other than driving, it's, you know, a super convenient form of getting around. I mean, plus, yeah, obviously it saves me time of having to work out. You get a little bit of aerobic workout in the morning and yeah, it saves a lot of time. I mean, I've been, commuting and riding in cities for, you know, for about four years really on a very regular basis. So it, it, it's skill that, you know, it's just like learning to drive a car. There are specific driving skills that apply to bikes. So. I tend to take the lake walk. So I get onto it just over at Leaf Erickson Park and then come over to Canal Park along the lake and then cut inland. And there's a little bike path that takes you over the freeway, then east, west over this way on Superior. My mileage that way is three and a half miles and it usually takes me about 20 minutes. My name's Bob Gabris and I, I, I commute out to Twig, out to Grand Lake every day. It's a um, 20 mile ride one way and I, I try to do it year round every day. I, well, I average probably about three or four days a week commuting and I absolutely love it. You know, it's just, it just fills my soul to be doing this. I just love it. I think I started back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I, I just, I bought my, my first mountain, well, my mountain bike that I used, I bought it in the winter time at Twin Port Cycling and rode it home and that was the beginning of my commuting. And, and I told myself, I convinced myself for quite a while that I couldn't do it. You know, I, I kind of got, got brainwashed that, you know, it's gonna take too long to bike. But once I get on a bike, I realized, oh my God, it only took me, you know, a few minutes to get there and it was easy. It's, it's a, it's, amazingly easy to get around on a bike, even in Duluth. Uh, I take 53 into, um, uh, all the way into Arrowhead Road and kind of cut through the Menards parking lot and, and come out at Arrowhead Road. From Arrowhead Road, I go down to um, Kenwood to College to 19th and slide on down the hill. Get that beautiful view of Lake Superior. I love it. Yeah, the bike is all about mutual aid. It's, uh, it looks like it's all about bikes, but really it's about developing relationships and uh, learning to rely on each other for what we need. So we, we have a bike shop and we have all the tools that a bike shop has and lots of bikes that are new but still work. And people come down and instead of doing anything with money, we do it all work trade. Somebody will come down and we'll help them build a bike and then instead of paying us or paying for the parts or the shop space, they'll help somebody else build their bike or they'll bring by cookies for us <laughs> or they'll like, somebody made a really awesome flag with a Bike Cave logo on it that we fly out the back of bikes sometimes. So people do whatever they're good at. We ask people like, 
do whatever you're good at back for us. We're good at building bikes and so you help us with whatever you're good at. And I think most of the time that works and people a lot of time are like, can't we just give you money? And they're like, no, you gotta be creative. <laughs> there are some, like there's some regulars that come down just uh, to help other people or just to see what's new, but then every day you never know who's gonna come. Yeah, the common denominator seems to be people who are either broke or people who just don't believe that bikes need to be all about money. You know? Sometimes I use the bus um, when, mostly when I have doula appointments in Superior. So I'll put the bike, I'll ride down to the holiday station, put my bike on the bus rack and go across. Because the bridge is so far away, it's so out of the way. And I think, I know also for a lot of people that stay with us, that's a huge transportation problem. Because they'll finally get a job, and it'll be in Superior, and then they can't get home. And so we've had a few guys that have had to walk the bridge because there's no buses running. I think one of the biggest obstacles for me is, is probably cars. Um, not just in terms of their the space that they occupy and, and literally being an obstacle, but um, that's one thing that keeps me from really enjoying riding is when I get past too close or when I almost get doored or I mean I've been one time I got chased through the ditch by a car. You know speed definitely trumps access for, for vulnerable users of the roadway. You know like on 2nd Street where Sadie got hit they just expanded it to like three lanes so it could be faster for automobile traffic and <coughs> it's now way less accessible for vulnerable traffic like pedestrians or people oh, in wheelchairs. They took those mm -hmm. Yeah, they took stoplights out. So, so there's no way that people will slow down at all. That's a good point. It requires me to keep my life at a walking pace and and yeah that's a whole lot less stressful. I'm a, a second career student right my first career was basically being a mom. I mean I worked too but it's kind of focused on being a mom. I have two teenagers. Uh, one of them goes to East and one of them goes to Harbor City and I work at St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, I work the night shift as a CNA, and yes, I walk through downtown Duluth at night, uh, through Central Hillside anyway. That's 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. I leave my house at about 10.30, typically. I walk, it's about 14 blocks. I walk down 4th Street and then 9th East, because it's always, it's, you know, it's well lit. There's plenty of traffic still at 10.30. So I have coworkers who are horrified. I'm like, I can't believe you walk. Aren't you afraid you're gonna get jumped or something? I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> um, in good weather, it takes probably 17, 18 minutes. And I do most of my grocery shopping at Whole Foods Co-op. Um, and since I walk past there on the way home from work, I do a lot of little trips. Yeah, I mean, my life is, is planned around not having a car, really. That's one of the reasons I live in Central Hillside. Um, all the kids, the activities that my kids like, they, they do a lot of theater. That's all downtown for the most part. Um, on the bicycle side, obviously there's, I would have a long wish list of infrastructure from bike lanes to, you know, the pending, hopefully pending redesign of 6th Avenue East and, and that stuff, just making it so that there's, I, I mean, I, I would say that for the most part I'm comfortable biking just about everywhere in Duluth, but 
I know there's a lot of people who don't ride now because it's kind of intimidating on the street sometime. And they could very easily, I think, be lured into riding if there was better infrastructure. Gosh, I don't know. There's a big dispute over whether or not bike lanes are productive or, or not. Um, I think they're nice. I think having a visual, this is where bikes are allowed to be kind of thing is good. But at the same time, motorists still don't have any respect for cyclists. So you have to kind of fix that problem too. Um, but yeah, I think connecting the the monger to the lake walk is kind of a no-brainer. You know, it's that ride's really dangerous right now. To get to the to monger. Get out to the monger, yeah. But if you connected it, you'd have a essentially a continuous bike path from Hankley almost up to Grand Marais. Um, one thing that would be cool. I don't know if they have the technology for this yet or not. Um, is to have like a, or even if they do this, uh, is to have like a an app or something for a smartphone to see where the bus is, like have little GPS's for buses. But I, I can't imagine that there's too much of a budget for that. They actually do have that. Do they have that? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so. There's a website where they show. And also, I was thinking too, uh, maybe we could just lock off a piece of uh, the downtown area of the, to traffic and make it only for walking on bicycles, like in Madison State Street, Madison, Wisconsin is State Street, where there's a walking area around a college area, and maybe only bicycles around UMD campus, make it all like a real fancy area just for walking and stuff, so that we reduce the smog and the carbon and the pollution, mm -hmm. and we encourage people to use public transport there a little more, and that'd be sweet. I think the transportation system is fine. They do a good job. They're within like this morning, you know, it was like five minutes late, but that's about as worse as they can get. Um, as far as service goes, I don't have any complaints about it at all, so. There are a lot of places that if I had a wheelchair or something, there still aren't curb cuts in places. Uh, that has improved somewhat. I mean, I've seen them put in a lot of new wheelchair ramps, but still, there are places that would be very difficult if you were requiring, you know, that ramp for right. your thing. Maybe later buses too? I don't know. There's been a couple times when I get off of work at like 10, 30, 11, and it's been, I got to walk all the way over to Sears um, to catch the bus, and I've, I've missed it a couple times, but... Oh, I like it. I like our transportation system. Oh, I think there are, I think there's huge advantages riding a bike. I um you know, driving a car it's you know you're sitting in a lazy boy with a flat screen in front of you, you're you know you're your entertainment system, you know, your food and your drinks there, a lot of distractions. On a bicycle, the big advantage is you've got unlimited visibility. You know, you can you can see everything. You know, there's there's no glare, no um, parts of your car that you have to look around to see where you're going. Not having to pay for a car gives me money to spend on things that are more important to me. You know, I, I get to eat good food. Uh, you know, I get to go out to eat sometimes, take the kids out. I can buy them the, the cute shoes that they want sometimes. Um, I'd recommend trying another mode. You know, try biking if it's uh, an appropriate distance. You don't have to do it every day. You don't have to do it all winter. But, you know, you can give it a shot one day and just try it out. It's like kind of a paradox. Um, we think that driving is going to get us there faster and therefore like we're always in a go 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 mode we go all day we go from one place to another and in between we have no downtime in the car it's on time and that misconception leads to us always being stressed out and not mindful we're not mindful of where we're going or what we're doing and so we have a hard time being mindful of other things our eating habits our in relationship with the environment, our relationship with other people. 
And I really think that all those long-term benefits can really come from not driving. Ride your bike. <laughs> People have more choices than they think that they do. Um, and I would love it if people were more aware of that. And you know, if you want to drive to the store, that's fine. But but be aware that you have this other option, and there are there are a lot of positive benefits to it that you might not be thinking about. Either.